back to the show, everybody. Big Would You Wednesday, so the Would You part is over. Uh, Buster only very active today on Twitter, or X. Uh, I'll read you some of the things. The most interesting thing heard at Metcamp yesterday, and it's not surprising, given that the Scherzer contract and others will melt off their payroll next winter, is that they fully intend to take a run at Juan Soto next winter. That's one thing. Uh, second thing, World Series pick from here, Phillies over the Yankees. Phillies are very driven after squandering a great shot last October when they were the best team. As improve uh, an improved defense, a healthy Harper, and ownership free agent committed to adding whatever is needed during the season. And finally, about Snell and Montgomery, Orioles have the need for a starting pitcher, and they are projected to have a payroll of just $100 million after years of spending nothing and hoarding cash. Be a great move for the incoming ownership. So Buster active today on X. And he's going to be active right now on the Michael K Show as our good friend joins us now. Buster, how you doing? Michael, ready to go. All right, let's, let's start with the Soto <laughs> stuff. So when you say they're going to make a run at Soto, does that mean that they're going to definitely outbid anybody? Or does Stearns act as some sort of a governor on Cohen that he's not giving the guy $60 million a year? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. That's going to be the that's going to be the big question because obviously Cohen has the ability to to step in and and to blow everybody out of the water. Um, as you know, when Yamamoto signed with the Dodgers, their offer was as big as the Dodgers' offer was. It was clear from how that played out that he wanted to play for the Dodgers. Um, so the Mets are still, you know, big spending. I, I, the place where I'm wondering with Stearns and. Uh, whether or not you know his, uh, you know his, him being tethered to analytics is going to play out is in the Pete Alonso negotiations because that position has not been paid. I think Soto is kind of a different discussion because of the type of hitter that he is, um, you know, as opposed to Pete playing in, in a place where the last guy to get two hundred million dollars at first base was Miguel Cabrera, you know, eight years ago. It's a different negotiation, but I. I, I think your question is dead on big picture about where the Mets are going to go going forward. How much power does Stearns have? Uh, you know, how much of it is driven by uh, by Steve's money? Now, I, I just want to follow up one thing. There was always this rumor, I, I don't think it could ever be proven, that there's like this tacit, agree, tacit agreement between the two teams. We're not going to get yours, you're not going to get ours. They didn't even sniff for Judge, and Judge could have helped that team. Do you think that that agreement yeah. exists, or has it just been dreamed up? Um, I, I would not be surprised if early in Steve's tenure that he didn't necessarily want to play hardball against everybody. He wasn't worried about, uh, I mean, I, I do worry, think that he was worried, based on the conversation about with other owners, they perceived that he was a little bit worried about, you know, um, offending other owners. Especially the Yankees who supported those, getting him in. Right. Exactly. Well, you know, Soto might be viewed as differently because he's not a homegrown guy, right? He's a one-year rental at this point for the Yankees versus Judge. I was surprised. I remember talking to you at that time saying Judge would have checked so many boxes for the Mets at that time. And, you know, considering where the bidding went, he would have been a perfect target for the Mets. And But, uh, you know, based on what I heard yesterday at Mets camp, I think they're going all in on Soto. How is it being received how the Mets are going about business this year in in 2024 does it make cohen look bad let me the mets look bad or do people around major league baseball understand the plan that the next off season is the better place to spend the money well i think that it's in keeping with how people perceive that he does business and you guys you know we all got a a feel for that last year when he had that press conference in early july when the season was falling apart and he basically was saying you know what I'm not going to sit here and, and uh, just throw money down a hole. And they pretty much made the decision in, in uh, July to blow it up and to move on. He's very rational. Uh, and, you know, you guys, uh, George Steinbrenner would have been at the other end of the spectrum. It would have been uh, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead, keep adding, taking on money. And the perception of Cohn is he's going to listen to, or he's going to follow what the numbers say. And you bring in David Stearns, who's really good with that. And he paid him a ton of money. He's the most expensive acquisition the Mets made during the course of the offseason. And so the feeling is is that uh, that it's certainly at the outset, he's going to follow what David is recommending. I would say this. I think the Alonso negotiation is going to be a case where 
it's going to come down to whether or not Steve steps in and says, I get it. The numbers give, put us at X, but, you know, Pete Alonso is a homegrown guy, and I think, I think he sh- we should keep him. He's a power hitter, et cetera. If Alonzo stays, it's going to be because of Steve Cohen. All right, so, so someone pointed this out to me. I was just going to mention, someone pointed this out to me, and I can't remember what year it was, but there was a season in which Chris Carter, playing for Stearns' Milwaukee Brewers, led the league in home runs, led the major leagues in home runs, I believe, and he was non-tendered. Right. <laughs> and it was one of the first signs that we saw that, you know, the, the first base position was going to be viewed financially differently than other spots. Here's the thing I don't understand, and this is what angers Met fans when I say this. Let's say that Steve Cohen is Sandy Koufax, and he goes to drive line, and he hires a pitching coach that wants him to throw right-handed. So you're taking away your best weapon. Sandy Koufax is left-handed. So I mean, let's just look at the Yamamoto thing. If Steve Cohen wanted Yamamoto so much... Why not offer him $400 million? Why are you bringing in a GM that's going to counteract the thing that you have an advantage over the entire sport? Why are you bringing somebody to tie your hands? I don't get it. Are you going to throw money around or not? It's a, it's a fair point. Uh, and I have not talked to Steve, so I can't ask him, you know, why not just blow it out of the water? You've got the money to spend. Why not just go there? Uh, and we've seen the Padres with the late Peter Seidler do that. I think the Phillies have increasingly been moving in that direction. You know, it, it's uh, their feeling was, hey, we're going to keep Aaron Nola. We're going to keep Zach Wheeler. We're going to do whatever it takes. John Middleton's out there making it very clear that, you know, he's going to spend whatever it takes. Um, so, and, you know, maybe last year was, for, for Steve, part of a learning curve. That you don't necessarily, you can throw a ton of money at it. You can add all kinds of stars, but there's no guarantee in what's going to happen. It, it definitely, uh, I, I, can't, I just couldn't imagine that he would bring David Stearns in. Because I'm a billionaire doesn't mean I go into the market and I spend a dollar per egg. It does benefit Major League Baseball teams for being frugal, right? Because it does affect your international money. It does affect where you draft. He said he wanted to rebuild this farm system. So, yeah, he could throw a ton of money. And you know, Buster, better than anybody. You don't do this in a vacuum. If you throw a pitcher a ton of money that's never thrown a ball in MLB, then how much are you going to have to spend on other guys that have succeeded in Major League Baseball? I always hear general manager in every sport, I don't want to set the market. So I think sometimes it's bad business that even if you have the money, to just throw it around. Well, and you're talking about someone who's made his, you know, he's made his life making money. He's not doing that by being reckless. And, you know, maybe, and I can tell you this, there are other teams that are involved with Yamamoto who are saying, yeah, we really like him. But the most attractive thing about him was the fact that he was 25. You know, to reach free agency at that age without much mileage on his arm, that would have been a sound investment. But there's also a feeling that there's going to be a learning curve with him, that it's going to take two or three years. I've had some teams tell me they look at him as being more of a number one, or excuse me, num- more of a number two, number three type starter than, you know, it's not like he's coming in to just be Garrett Cole right away. All right, so we've got Snell and Montgomery available. Uh, the Red Sox might have not have Giolito. Uh, the Orioles. then I'm thinking he's going to wind up with the Angels. The Giants have been mentioned as well. I just don't think for the Yankees and for the Mets it, it makes a lot of sense because you saw what happened with Bellinger and with Chapman. They wound up taking shorter-term deals, you know, one-year deals uh, essentially with opt-outs. Uh, yeah, they're three-year deals, but the, you can have opt-outs after years one and years two. 
if you're a team and you're going to invest that type of money where you're going to be taxed at 110% and you're going to give up draft picks, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, on the other hand, you know, the Angels can do that with the sort of taxes that the Yankees would incur. And uh, so I, that, to me, is the team to watch on this one. With Montgomery, you know, the perception among some of his friends and teams is that his preference is to be uh, you know, in a smaller market like Texas, like St. Louis, I just don't know if those opportunities are there at this point. Um, I know the Red Sox had interest in him. You guys know the connection with his wife in Boston, and you know maybe that would make some sense. And and maybe the Red Sox have some insurance on the Giolito deal. All along, I thought the Red Sox on paper made a lot of sense, but I don't know what Jordan wants. You know, does he does he want to go to a different team? Uh, and, and I. You know, the Orioles are, are maddening in a way because the team is amazing. Yeah, the group of young players is amazing. This is an opportunity for an owner who spent nothing and for incoming ownership uh, to go out and to make a splash and get the sort of player they need for a team that has shortage in pitching. Their position players, tremendous, but they have a lack of depth with their starting rotation. They absolutely should be on one of these two guys. I think Montgomery would make a ton of sense for them. I just don't want to know if the owners would spend the money. It, it's unbelievable what, what's going on there. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Let, let's move back to the Phillies for a second. And, and just yeah. tell me that, tell me, please tell me that the world has not gone upside down. Is there any way on God's green earth that the Phillies are going to give an extension to Bryce Harper who has eight years left on his contract. I mean, the uh, only Scott, and I like Scott, would have the audacity to ask for it. Are the Phillies going to give it to him? I, I think eventually they will work something out. Uh, I don't. Do I think that they're going to, you know, commit another forty million dollars a year for an extra four years? No. But I know Bryce loves playing there. He made up his mind. He wanted to stay with the Phillies. Uh, you know, is it some sort of an understanding that he's going to finish his career and, and put some numbers to it that are, uh, you know, probably going to wind up being more modest than what people realize because at their end of his career? Yeah, I think so. We had a, you know, great conversation because we had the Mets on our, our broadcast yesterday with Francisco Lindor, and he noted that in the last couple of years, you're starting to to see this sport, which, it, you know, contracts have gone out for guys 39, 40, 41. <laughs> mostly from the Padres, you start to get the sense that the sport is retreating on age. And it's now more of a 20 to 36-year-old sport versus going into the late 30s and 40s. And the Phillies obviously would you know, have to make some concessions to give Bryce that, uh, you know, that extension. I don't think it would be as big of money as, uh, as what he's making now. Who potentially can be this year's Arizona Diamondbacks? And can the Mets possibly be in that conversation? And, John, I, I should add one more sentence. I would say this. Among all owners right now, John Middleton is that guy. He's the guy who is cost be damned. I like the player. I like my team. I want to keep this together. So we have to remember that uh, when, when, we talk about, uh, when we talk about whether or not Bryce gets an extension. Uh, Don, can you repeat your question? Well, who can be this year's Arizona Diamondbacks? And could it be the Mets? Yeah, so I'm in the process of doing a poll of executives around baseball on a number of various questions, and uh, you know, and one of the questions I have is who's the sleeper? And I'm getting back a lot of Mariners, and that's couched with should we consider them to be a sleeper because they've been making the playoffs? Their pitching staff is loaded. They've at, made some nice additions in their lineup to fill in some of the you know for the offense they didn't have last year. And I'm hearing a lot from this, about the Cincinnati Reds who loaded up this year. Um, you know, and on the flip side, in terms of being a team, I mean, I think the Dodgers go into this year, like the Braves, just under enormous pressure. In fact, there are a lot of teams it feels like that it's you got to have a great year or this thing, there are going to be major changes here. There's so much pressure on the Dodgers. You know, we haven't seen a team that's entering a season with the kind of pressure that the Dodgers have on them since those Yankee teams in, you know, 2000, 2001, and Michael will attest to this, that team by the by the fourth year there in 2001 after they'd won championships, they were exhausted from that. And I and I do wonder if the Dodgers will be able to, 
you know, be able to, to to shoulder that the entire season. We're in the middle of the baseball update with Buster Only, brought to you by Bet365. So you were at the Met-Yankee game at, at Port St. Lucie. What's the, the buzz among baseball people about Spencer Jones? Is, do they believe he's the real deal? Oh, yeah. Um, and I, you know, uh, just because he went to the same school I did, I've, you know, been hearing about him for years. Uh, That's Vanderbilt for people I don't know. Uh, uh. Yeah, and he he is such a phenomenal athlete. You know, yesterday at an extra base hit, to watch him run, it was shocking. <laughs> I mean, in some respects, it's a lot like Aaron Judge. When you see him move, uh, it, it surprises you someone that big can seem that athletic. You know, I mean, as time goes on, we'll see, you know, where a strike zone is and he's able to, to generate the sort of coverage. There's always the concern about the strikeouts for someone who's that big and, and has to, you know, handle that sort of strike zone. But there is a lot of buzz about him because of his power. So there's no way, you know, we had a caller yesterday wanting the Yankees trade him for Corbin Burns. And I don't think the Yankees will trade this kid. So no, uh, even if somebody year, becomes... Yeah, no way. Even for... Even for um, D- Dylan Cease, I can't see them parting with with a guy. They, this guy could be the replacement for Soto if Soto leaves. And Stanton, right? Yep. Potentially that the person coming in and potentially doing what you anticipated from Stanton, a hundred percent. They are totally jacked up about him, excited about him, and and the the stuff that you heard yesterday about Soto from the Yankee people about how the players all, you know, stop and watch him take batting practice and they love his regimen. I, I really feel like that they're getting Soto and Verdugo at the perfect time. You know, both these guys have a lot to prove. They got a ton on the line this year. And I'm hearing this from people who know both of them. They really think the presence of Judge is going to help each one of those guys. You know, in Soto and San Diego, there's the clubhouse thing. Where is he going to hit the lineup? That seems to have completely melted away. Uh, and I think Judge has a lot to do with that. And I think with Verdugo, too, he needs a teammate who, if he has a bad day, if he doesn't run out of ball, if something, you know, if he shows up a little bit late, he needs a teammate who's going to look him in the eye and come on, man, you do better than that. A peer, and Judge is that perfect guy. Do you think, Buster, that the Yankees made the trade for Soto? Now, Higashioka, obviously just a backup catcher, but four young pitchers, four young arms. Did they make that trade for one year, or do they truly expect to keep him? Because with Zach Wheeler getting $42 million a year at the age of 33, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. Soto's going to get $50 million a year. Do they think they're going to sign him? So Soto's contract, I believe this, because, as I say, I think the Mets are going to be involved, and I think the Yankees are going to be all in to get him. They, they obviously are... You know, have to be cognizant of, of how far they go beyond Judge because of what they paid him in the past. But it, he's going to wind up, I think, having a chance to surpass Otani's contract in terms of present day value. The the seven hundred million dollar you know figure with Otani, of course, is a joke. It's a mirage. His actual present day value is four hundred sixty one million dollars. Right. And Soto has a chance to to be at that number. Uh, I, I think with these two teams involved, a hundred percent. And it's up to him to have a big year. You know, I've told you guys before, when he started in San Diego, he, uh, you know, he got off, he started slowly, he wasn't completely comfortable, he acknowledged that as time went on. So he's already got the, that, that scar tissue, he already knows what that's like. I think he's absolutely poised for a huge year if he can stay healthy. But the thing, Michael, with the idea of trading for him, believing you're going to have him long term, mm-hmm. guys, wouldn't that have been a mistake? You know he's going to test free agency. Well, maybe they're just intent on outbidding everyone. But if that were the case, wouldn't it have been better than not give up anything, ride through this year, and then you could outbid everybody when he becomes a free agent? But I think following 82 and 80, this became a very important year to win. Yep. A hundred percent. Totally agree with you, Michael. So I that, totally agree. Yeah. Like, so if that's the case, then... Had, the, I'm sorry, Aaron. Go, uh, Aaron uh, Buster, go ahead. Because oh, I want to ask about yeah, Aaron. They Bloomberg. had to be all in. They had to make substantive changes, and they needed a left-handed hitter, obviously, and that, that guy is built for the ballpark. So how much pressure is on Boone to win this year? Uh, I, I, it almost speaks for itself, right? And what's interesting is it's not only Aaron Boone that it feels like that this year's a huge year. Uh, last year of his contract. It's also last year Dave Roberts' contract. The last year of Alex Cora's contract. There's going to be so much managerial shakeup 
by the end of the year, I think it's going to shock you guys. Golly Marmol, the, the manager of the Cardinals. Skip Schumacher, who's regarded as this great up-and-coming manager uh, with the Marlins last year of his contract. I, I think there are a lot of guys under pressure. Have you uh, have you covered the, uh, the Blue Jays yet in person? I have not seen them in person this spring. Because you're the guy that would, would have the guts to ask Matt, and what are you doing with that beard? <laughs> yeah, but you've known him forever. What about? What did you text him and ask him? Yeah, I guess I. I don't want to hurt his feelings, you know. Well, who are you to talk right now? Yeah, I. I, I but I, I have a beard buster because I lost a bet. He he didn't lose a bet. He, he, he looks like he's seventy instead of like sixty three. You remember when Letterman, you know, his show wrapped up, and the oh, next yeah. time he saw me, he had that huge beard. And, and I wonder about that like too. It's just shocking. Yeah, I right. wonder. I it's wonder about totally that. Shocking. Yep. <laughs> so you have the Yankees and the Phillies in the World Series. Phillies winning, right? Yes. That, that would be fun. Repeat a lot of 2009. Fun. Yeah. I love it. But it was, yeah, and the Yankees, as you guys know, you know, there's a lot of betting odds for them. It's surprising to me how low the Phillies are among favorites. This was a team in the middle of October last year. They were the best team in baseball, and I think that regret over what happened is, is part of what drives them this year. Great stuff, Buster. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. See you guys. That's the baseball update brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. I don't, I don't, I don't think Mattingly's beard's that bad. First of all, he's an incredibly handsome guy. He's covering up that face. Me yeah. covering up my face, who cares? Good idea. No, but I just don't think it makes him look that old. I, I do. I have to tell you, though, and I think it's probably projecting, I do have a pet peeve of guys in my age range. Right. Growing out these big gray beards. It's like such a thing right now. Well, I, I first of all, look at Tony Clark, the head of the Players Association. I don't I don't get it. Please call that up. It, it's 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 such a weird look. And to this moment, he's never really explained it. Why would Letterman grow that beard? Does he, Does still he have think it? he yeah. Does he think he's anonymous? He's not anonymous. You still know it's David Letterman. How old is Tony Clark? Tony Clark has gotta be in his fifties. Yeah, I don't know why people do it. Like, it. It's a trendy thing now, and I know we should all like be proud of... of like Jock Vaughn. Why? Yeah, I, I hate it. I hate like Like, in the case of a Don, where everything went white, it works. It's like with Mattingly's beard. And, and by the way, that's, the, that's why I don't hate Mattingly's. Yeah, Mattingly's but when, nice. But when you, when you still have... When you either have no hair and you're young, or you have a head of hair and it's not gray, but the beard grows in completely gray, I just... I, I, maybe I'm self-hating on my aging. I hate it. I despise it. And when people are having, like, they're doing the beard, right. but just here in the chin, they're getting two big, huge skunk spots. Yeah. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with some dye. Keep it keep it dark. I haven't used it yet, but believe, oh, believe me, I will. I'm thinking of going darker with mine, should I? Why not? Because it would look weird, because my, my hair is not that dark. Well, it depends how dark. If you go black, if you, you no, know. No, I go brown, the color, color of my hair. I think it would look, I think it look nice. I don't know how you could. How hard is it to do? You just use a brush or something? Easy. Just oh, for men, baby. By the way, we could all do it if Just for Men will give us some right. nice sponsorship. Uh, Nobody play for Mr. Gray. Black. I'm going to need it, though. I'm getting a little... When I put the glasses on yesterday, I saw a bunch of hairs. Mm. I've got a question Great. to ask you about the glasses, and it might offend you, but I'll do that when we get back. Go ahead. No, I'll do it when we get back because it's 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 it. I think it's a really good... Don't, don't take your headphones off when you have work to do. Don't even think about it. Oh. Don't even think about it. Oh. Yeah, get to work. And put your glasses on, too, so you can read. Well, you know what? You're right. You've got to tell us about better help. And oh, nobody does this better than you. The Michael K. Show on Yes is presented by Untuck It. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. Shop now at untuckit.com. At DraftKings Casino, we give credit where credit is due. In Casino Credits. New players, sign up now and get a deposit match up to $100 in Casino Credits when you deposit $5 or more. Download America's number one online casino or play online today. And get a deposit match up to $100 in Casino Credits when you deposit $5 or more. DraftKings Casino, the crown is yours. When my grandfather was diagnosed with mesothelioma, he didn't know which law firm to hire. His doctor gave him one name, his old union buddy gave another. But my grandfather, he did his homework and found Whites and Luxembourg. 
it was hard to find anyone who could match their experience, so the choice was easy. Call Whites and Luxembourg today at 855-VERDICT. That's 855-V-E-R-D-I-C-T. Okay, so Domino's Perfect Combo includes two medium one-topping pizzas, 16 Parmesan bread bites, eight cinnamon twists, and a two liter of Coke. Today we're on the street asking real people how much they think it all costs. All of it? All of it. $44, $45? $34.99. The two pizzas are probably 10 each. 75 What if I told you that this Domino's Perfect Combo is only $19.99? Shut the night door. This will feed a family. It's Domino's Perfect Combo, and it's all just $19.99. Spring training is blooming on Yes, and we're your home for the Yankees with all the action from Steinbrenner Field. Watch the biggest names, the best prospects, and the newest Bronx star, Juan Soto. Yankees coverage continues tomorrow at 6.30 on the Yes app. Presented by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. Scoliosis is a common condition involving an abnormal sideways curve of the spine. My name is Sarah. I'm a senior in high school. I was diagnosed with scoliosis at age 11, and after seeing the doctors at New York Spine Institute, I was able to beat scoliosis without surgery. With hard work and determination, I was able to bring my curve from 29 degrees to 5 degrees and resume all activities without pain. New York Spine Institute. Better treatment for a better life. At City Harvest, we believe no New Yorker has to go hungry. With your help, we're on the road 365 days a year, rescuing over 77 million pounds of nutritious food and delivering it free to millions of New Yorkers, transforming surplus food into sustenance, sustainability, and smiles, rallying thousands of New Yorkers to power a network of nourishment across our city. One day, one meal, and one New Yorker at a time. That's how we feed good. Donate at cityharvest.org. 96% of homeowners are overpaying for home repairs. Homeowners need to call Choice Home Warranty now. Studies show average homeowners are spending up to $6,000 a year on repairs for home systems and appliances. That's 10 times more than they should. Get all the protection you need with a plan through Choice Home Warranty on over 25 home systems and appliances. Coverage includes your air conditioning, plumbing, stove, washer and dryer, and more. Choice Home Warranty has a fast claim processing time, so your home doesn't skip a beat. With a large nationwide network of technicians, we'll begin the dispatch process right away to get your covered appliance fixed. Stop overpaying for home repairs. Protect yourself with a plan from Choice Home Warranty today. Call now for your free quote and get your first month free. 800-983-8523. That's 800-983-8523. On FanDuel Casino, you can play hundreds of games, like Buffalo, Buffalo! Fort Knox Cleopatra, Rich Little Piggies, 